our peacekeeping task force released a suggested budget for the state assemblies. The idea is to create a minimum structure needed for the assembly militia, sheriff, continental marshal, and court organizations to have offices. Do we need to have our own separate offices or do we not own the existing offices, jails, and court buildings? And then can we use their jails in our jurisdiction? Would we have to, I mean, how would that look? Would we have to have our own jailers for our jurisdiction? We're just trying to figure this out. Well, as part of the remedy, they had to leave us the state trust courts because otherwise everything they did would have been you know, outrageously and in your face illegal with big, large neon signage, illegal, illegal, <laughs> illegal. Um, so we do have our state trust courts, which are identifiable because they are named after the state trusts. But first of all, you have to realize that there are state trusts in all 50 states. And they are named after the state. And they leave off the trust part, right? They leave off the word trust so you don't know what's going on. So they refer to it, for example, as Alaska State, Ohio State, Massachusetts State, Virginia State, and, you know, they add other words to it, like Wisconsin State Capitol mm. and Ohio State University, right? But what that really refers to is the state trust that they set up in the wake of the Civil War and which they set up as territorial states. Okay. Now, just recently, as a result of our state assemblies getting themselves properly declared and organized, we were able to bring home all of the Western states and the states that were uh, created during and after the Civil War, which includes West Virginia, and um, actually enroll them as official states of the Union. Hey, hurrah. Yeah. I know. And uh, that was done retroactive to the date that they became eligible for statehood when the applications were received and approved by the uh, U.S. Congress. They uh, just went into kind of a holding pattern because our states of the Union were not in session. Our assemblies were not in session, so they were not available to open the door and accept and acknowledge uh, the newer states as uh, states of the union. Right. That has now been done. And as a result, this is another way in which the uh, war between the states is definitively over. Mm, interesting. Because we're all states of the union and we are all on equal footing. The equal footing doctrine applies. Oh, I see. It now kicks in, huh? Yes, it now kicks in. And what that also does is it makes it impossible for the territorial government to claim that it has a territorial custodial interest in those states. Hmm. See, what they were claiming is that these, these, uh, all the states that were formed during and after the Civil War were being held as territorial state of state interests, even though they were supposed to be full states of the Union. They weren't because they weren't formally enrolled. Therefore, the territorial government was retaining a custodial interest in those states and those people and their private assets and their public assets under a vestige of the Northwest Ordinance. I see. And so now that goes poof. Bye. You know that, that big fight that the Bundys had over grazing rights? Yeah. 
No over. More. Yeah. So the the uranium was sold. Can we ask for it back? Well, I think we can block any mining of it or any transfer of it. Because if it was uranium, my understanding is that it was uranium in the ground that was sold. Mm. And the fact of it is that they didn't <laughs> they didn't have the right to sell it. Right. But even if they did, they don't have any right to move our soil to get to it. Oh yeah. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> yes, it's Portia's paradox. And you know, it's it's kind of funny. We need to remember the merchant of Venice. Hmm. There is so much information contained in that play about this exact situation. The pound of flesh, Portia's solution to it. It's this is something that we are still dealing with 500 years later. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go back and reread that. Right. So we are still dealing with the pound of flesh issues. Hmm. People don't realize that the pound of flesh refers to the blackmail that the bankers um, enforced as part of the security deposit on loans. Hmm. Blackmail was used to secure loans. And the person in receipt of the loan had to do something really despicable before witnesses, crimes, so that the bankers were guaranteed that you'd be obedient and you'd do everything that they told you to do and you would most certainly pay your debt or die trying. Mm, wow. So that's what the pound of flesh is about, and that's where the British pound got its name. Oh my. Oh my. Ugly business. Ugly. Very ugly business. And that's that's part of the reason that usury is forbidden. That's why Christians don't practice usury. That may come as a lot of uh, that may come as new news to a lot of Christians out there, but Christians are forbidden from practicing usury against anybody. Hmm. And Jews are forbidden to practice usury against fellow Jews. Right. But they're happy to practice it against everyone else. Yes, they are. Uh, but they're also sadly um, forced to uh, act as uh, agents for unscrupulous Christians who don't want to get their hands dirty by practicing usury against other people, but do want the profits from usury. I see. So what happened is during the Middle Ages, the kings wanted the money from the usury, right? Mm -hmm. They want to loan out money and get paid on it. Mm -hmm. But they didn't want to get their hands dirty with it. Mm -hmm. So they decreed that the Jews in their kingdoms had to act as bankers and agents of usury for them. As if that really changed anything, the damned hypocrites. They, they were just as guilty as, as the people that they were forcing to act as their agents to commit usury. Mm. But anyway, that's what they were thinking back then, that, that they could avoid the sin of usury themselves by forcing the Jews to commit usury against Christians and um, that that was okay because the Jewish religion let it let that practice be that way. So interesting. Well, and so crazy. It's I mean, crazy. Really. Yeah. yeah. All this stuff yeah. is crazy. What what is there about thou shalt not kill that is so difficult to understand? Or thou shalt not steal. Or, or thou shalt not you know, practice usury, or thou yeah. shalt not uh, practice sorcery, and thou shalt not, uh, you know, wake the dead. Um, yeah. I mean, there, there are so many things that are just so, they're just so simple. How could you miss the point? And yet, people are always constantly trying to weasel around it. Oh, well, uh, I didn't actually kill anybody, I murdered them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. It, it, it was a homicide. 
it was a, a justifiable homicide or a not justifiable homicide, but it was a homicide. I did, it wasn't a killing. You see how, they, how the, they've used terms of art and legalese and, and uh, all sorts, an infinity of synonyms and quasi-synonyms and semantic deceits to try to weasel out of the most simple things. Yeah. You know, it's not a killing, it's a murder. Oh, no, it's not a murder, it's a homicide. Mm hmm. I know. Wow. Well, just to clarify um, on the jail piece of it. So do we do we need to budget to to build our own jails or do we need to budget to rent space in their jails? I wish I knew. Oh, OK. Um, basically, in most every instance I can think of, our money was used to, buy, to actually build and run the court buildings and jails and penitentiaries. Right. I, I cannot think of a instance where that is not true. And certainly in those instances, um, the, the facilities are ours. And as the presumed donors of the state trust, uh, our state assemblies have every right to come in and say, all right, well, we're going to need space for our courts since we're in session now and our courts are in session. Uh, we're going to need space in the court buildings and the parking lots and the jails and the penitentiaries. But I'll tell you right now that our law is so much simpler than their law. Mm -hmm that we, well, we have two real distinct advantages. Number one, people who are aware enough to self-govern don't commit crimes nearly as often. Right. <laughs> Number two, our law is so draconian that it tends to get rid of or so severely discourage crime that it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and number three, when we do have instances where people are bad enough that they have to be put in jail to, to separate them out, um, that's why they're outlawed. They're to be separated out and kept away from the, the rest of the population because there's something so screwless, so bad, so violent about that person that the rest of us have to be protected from them. That's why we use jails. We don't use jails for things like stealing a chicken. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't use jails for kiting a check. We don't use jails for smoking marijuana. Uh, th those are infractions. Those are things that aren't even on our radar. <laughs> if it doesn't harm someone, if it doesn't cause a direct injury, and it doesn't directly injure their property, then there is no crime. Right. So we don't even deal with all those sorts of things. We don't have traffic tickets. Yeah, all that stuff is just out of sight, out of mind, doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And forget about thought crimes. We don't have thought crime. Mm -hmm. We don't have anything like that. So ours is very, very simple. Our, our court system compared to theirs is elemental. You either hurt somebody or you hurt their property or you didn't. Right. There has to be direct evidence. There has to be direct evidence and there has to be an injured party who's standing there and accusing all by themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. There can't be somebody who heard it for somebody for who heard it from somebody. Mm -hmm. It can't be somebody who doesn't have a direct firsthand knowledge of mm -hmm. something. And most especially, it can't be a lawyer standing there and making all these allegations and accusations about something that they weren't part of, didn't witness, and are just out there in the blue going yap, yap, yap about. That is not part of our system at all. Right. On the other hand, because we are self-governing and because we are 
um, taking responsibility and claiming the rights that go with the responsibility, our law is very draconian. And by that, I mean, it's, it's severe. Uh, our, our law, uh, somebody gets caught rustling cattle, they hang. Somebody, um, you know, beats up somebody's wife and rapes her and leaves her for dead. That's a dead man. It's cut and dried. It's right there. Boom. Somebody swindles somebody on a mortgage scheme. Their own house is worth it. We, we don't mess around. And, and we don't have long terms of incarceration, generally speaking. I mean, if somebody is criminally insane and they have to be sequestered away from the general population, our answer is to put them in a, a mental hospital. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, yeah. um, you know, we, we just don't make use of jails the way that they make use of jails as long-term holding pens for, for offenses. Right or apparent offenses. Right, well, you know, things like armed robbery. Yeah. There's a good example. Somebody has uh, robbed a bank. Well, they may be in jail for a long time, mm -hmm. but there are relatively few crimes that, that really get that kind of, uh, of a, um, most of, the, most of the time, what you get are community offense laws where, uh, for example, you, uh, you get caught vandalizing public property. Mm -hmm. Well, in our system, the answer is that you're going to repair the damage you did. I mean, directly, you're going to go out there and you're going to scrub the paint off the wall. Exactly. You know? So it, our whole system is, is much more, more simple and commonsensical than anything that you're normally aware of in their system. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you for that explanation. And I think that'll help people kind of put their heads around uh, the peacekeeping budget. Learn how to become an American state national or American state citizen by navigating to www.theamericanstatesassembly.net. Links to Anna's articles and resources can be found in the video description box. Thank you for subscribing, liking, sharing and commenting.